I probably should have started off by saying someone got kicked off the flight. Hey crew, welcome back to my channel. We're trying this for a second time because I just did my whole spiel and then I noticed that I was not recording. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Bridget. I'm going back to work. This is my la... Sorry. I don't play games like that. I thought somebody was in here with me. Anywho, this is my last true trip for November. My next assignment touches December, so this is the last one that is only in November. It is Thanksgiving tomorrow, so I will be um, at work for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to somewhere that I've only been once, probably like the first year of me flying or second year of me flying, and that's Belgium, Brussels or Brussels, Belgium, I'll put the right formation or context on the screen. Um, and funny enough, I went there the last time around the same time. So I got to go because now I've recorded this twice and I'm behind schedule. So see you in the next clip. So it is 2.22 and I've just made it to New York. Um, I have about three hours until I have to sign in for my trip today. I came in pretty early because it is the holiday weekend. Um, I didn't want any trouble as far as commuting. So I'm in my little hiding spot and I'll sit and wait until probably about 5.30ish. Um, and then make my way to the lounge. I'm not too sure if I've shared with you guys before that for international trips, we brief in the lounge in comparison to domestic trips where we meet at the gate. And I can only talk from my base. Other bases do it differently, but yeah. Enough of me rambling. I will see you guys in the next clip. so I just wanted to share uh, my new favorite spray that I use um, I don't know if I've shared with you before that I do have trouble taking naps while I am on my layover depending on what time we get into the destination and what time it is back home but this Dr. Teal spray has been working wonders for me so I thought why not share it with you guys I will most definitely link it down below please excuse my voice I am fighting the flu in real life and fun fact tomorrow is my birthday and unfortunately i will not be celebrating because i'm sick so let's get back to the vlog hey crew so please excuse the yellow light um because this is the best the lighting is going to be but i wanted to come on and speak to you guys really quick i am in um brussels belgium it is currently 11 18 a.m it has taken me a long time to get to this point because um as you guys saw in my montage the washcloth excuse me the washcloths were dirty so i had to wait no one ever showed up i got a thought of hmm it's in the morning maybe cleaning staff is out cleaning rooms luckily enough there was a person outside at a room neighboring my room and I asked for washcloths from them. But let's do this crew debriefing really quickly um, because I need to go to sleep. 
and get up in time to meet up with some of the crew members, hopefully. So, um, I worked the main cabin coming to Brussels. It was supposed to be 100% full. We're boarding the flight, nothing out of the ordinary. And as I'm standing at the XRO, which I was responsible for because it was near my jump seat, I see a passenger downing his own mini bottle. Now, PSA, for those of you who are not familiar with this rule, you may not be a frequent flyer or traveler, or you just may not have ever heard of it. Um, you cannot consume your own alcohol on board, whether you brought it from home, you purchased it at duty free. Um, it doesn't matter the circumstances or the scenario, you cannot consume your own alcohol. So I let this gentleman know that, you know, you can't consume your own alcohol. You're not allowed to drink it on board. He's like, well, I only have half left, so I might as well finish it. And I was like, no, that's not an option. At that point, I really didn't pay attention that he was in the exit row. I was kind of more focused on, you know, getting everyone on board because this was stopping the boarding process for me to stop and speak to him. And we continued about the flight. Now we're getting towards the end. Sorry, continued about the boarding. We're getting towards the end of boarding. And it's now my turn to um, brief the exit rows because pretty much everyone who's going to be in those seats are in those seats. So... Um, I probably should have started off by saying someone got kicked off the flight. <laughs> um, so anywho, I go over to brief my ex around. That's when I noticed that he's sitting in the ex row and I'm like, you know, I'm doing my spiel. We're not going to go into that. Um, and before I could even finish what I'm saying, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll do whatever. I'll kick people off the plane. I'll throw them out the windows. And I'm like, mm, this is not sounding right and i'm not comfortable with it um for all the new hire flight attendants out there one tip that i could give you always trust your gut gut when something feels off it's off don't try and persuade yourself like oh it's fine i'll probably be fine especially dealing with safety as everyone and every airline says safety is our top priority you have to be comfortable with the people sitting in the X row or wherever because you have to count on them in the event of an emergency. So I went and spoke to the purser who is the lead flight attendant for international trips at my airline. Um, that's the term that they use. And I let him know the scenario. Um, and ultimately the passenger was taken off the flight. Well, it wasn't a pretty scene of him getting off the flight. Um, he did have some choice words to have between the gate agent. And um, it also just kind of showed that, you know, he wasn't able to fly. Like, he wasn't in the right space to fly. Um, something else happened on the flight, but I can't remember it at this point. But one thing I do want to share. So the last time I was in Brussels was, I think, my first or second year of flying. And I don't think I vlogged that trip. If I did, I'll try and, like, go back and look for it. And if it is vlogged, I'll link it. But I had a really bad migraine and I didn't go out. Funny enough, like I said in the intro of this, it was during this time. So the Christmas market was open. So I'm like, okay, I'm finally getting a redo. I'm going to be able to go to the Christmas market. Speaking to another flight attendant, he's like, the Christmas market doesn't open until Friday. It's Thursday. <laughs> so no Christmas market for me. You know, it, at this point, I'm just have to chalk it up that it wasn't meant to be. Um, and that's about it. So I pretty much have two hours to try and sleep because the crew members want to meet up at two o'clock. So I will see you guys in the next clip. I'll try my best to get some clips for you guys. And yeah. Bye. Hey crew, so I am back. Oh, and I forgot something in the bathroom. But I'm back from eating a late lunch with some of my crew members. Um, we went to a Senegalese restaurant called Le Dakar. Um, I didn't get much footage because there wasn't much to record and we didn't explore afterwards because it is it gets dark now and it's cold outside. Um, but we went to a kebab place 
close by to get food for tomorrow and then we stopped to a grocery store and I found these potato chips and I was talking to one of the crew members about how he also likes to try potato chips from other countries. Sorry that the camera's shaking. I have a little janky setup right here. That's beside the fact. So I bought these, never heard of the brand, but it is a sweet chili flavor and I thought why not try it with you. First reactions, we'll share it together. Okay. I definitely taste a sweet, but I taste zero chili. It's not bad though. Um, so fun fact about me that I don't think I've ever shared, or if I have, I can't remember on this channel is that I'm a very picky eater. Um, so we all struggled at this restaurant because everything was in French. None of us spoke French and the lady who waited on us, her name was Isabella, was so sweet. She took the time. She spoke a little bit of English to try and explain to us with the help of Google Translate. So one of the things I'm not fond of that this meal had was peanut. And it was like a chicken cooked in a peanut sauce. I don't know what overcame me that I was being adventurous and trying something new but I said okay I'll try it and it was really good I surprisingly liked it knowing how picky I am so I thoroughly enjoyed my meal I enjoyed my Thanksgiving dinner with the crew members that I did go out with and this layover wasn't bad I didn't do much but it was still a nice layover so it's 7.32 for those of you who are not familiar with night, uh, military time. And I'm in for the night. I'm going to make a few phone calls. I should say, sorry if I say happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. Even though when you see this video, Thanksgiving will be long gone. But still, mm, that's about it. So if anything else happens, I'll come back and speak to you guys. But if not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, crew. I can't win with the lighting. This lighting looks washed out. The other one is yellow, but it's just going to have to do. Um, it is 8.30 in the morning. Um, and it's time to go back to the States. I did remember what I wanted to tell you last night. Two things, actually. So the first thing was, if you're familiar with a f brand that airline crews use as their luggage it's called travel pro and it has something called a j hook that attaches to it so you can hang another bag on it so my normal routine when i'm commuting is to take the j hook off if i have to gate check my bag or just plain check it in to um receive a baggage claim because sometimes they get lost or they get damaged so leaving home Wednesday, I did the same thing I normally do. My bag was being gate checked. I was flying on a smaller aircraft. I took off my J hook. So I thought I held it as I was getting on the plane, but as I was sitting on the plane towards the end of the boarding process, it dawned on me like, where's your J hook? So I got up like, oh, is the door, boarding door closed? And they're like, yes, yeah, sorry, we just closed the boarding door. Um. So unfortunately I lost that J hook, so I have to purchase a new one for my bag. And that meant that um, I would have to carry three bags, well, at least two bags, roll, put one on top of my rollerboard, hold one bag and roll the rollerboard with the other hand because I no longer had a J hook to hook my second tote, but third bag total on. So the lead flight attendant on that trip, I mean on that flight was like, you know, maybe I have an extra one in my bag. I had a situation similar happen and they end up finding it and returning it to me. So I'll check my bag once we get to New York and see if I can give one to you. And I was like, thank you so much. 
So she did that. Unfortunately, she did not have another J-hook, but she was so nice enough to give me like a lunch bag strap that she had an extra one of to be able to hang my bag over the handle of the rollerboard, which would stop me from having to hold it. So shout out to that flight attendant. I'm sorry I did not catch her name, but that was really nice of her. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was on the flight. So quick PSA. I'm about to put you guys down because my hands getting tired quick PSA is um, overhead bin space is shared space so on this flight um, we had the overhead bins get full which is normal it was a full flight and we started to put bags in um, vacant overhead bins and this passenger got so bent out of shape because mind you it, her husband's bag was in that bin but taking up the whole bin but it wasn't necessary for her to take up the whole bin if that makes sense like he had his bag lengthwise which could have been turned so another bag can be put in his bag was not obstructed it was not mashed in with another bag each bag fit in there perfectly and we're on polar opposite sides so once we were putting up this lady's bag the other passenger started to get very upset and was like but he needs to access his bag during the flight. And I'm trying to reassure her, like, you know, his bag is not being blocked. He can still access it. There's no problem. It's on this left-hand side. The other bag that I just put in is on the right-hand side. Do you know this lady turned around and was like, I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking to my husband. You know, I always try to be positive. But sometimes when you encounter people, they really touch your patience. And that was a point where my patience was really tested because in my head, I'm like, who is she talking to? But I can't respond like that. So I left it alone. And I was like, ma'am, his bag is not being um, blocked. Is there a problem? And she just turned her head and her husband's like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, ignore her. So yeah, PSA overhead bin space is shared space. It is not reserved by your seat. I understand I don't even know how that misconception came around, but you know, with holiday flying, you get more flyers who are not normal flyers or frequent flyers, so they may not know the rules. So I'm just gonna write it off as she didn't know that it was shared space. Okay, it's time for me to go downstairs, so I will see you guys in the next clip, wherever that is.